How's it going? How's it going? Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to the Dollar Hour. I am Deontay Burton, a.k.a. Mr. Short Dollar himself. We got a great show planned tonight. Tonight we're asking a question. Why did your business, why your business didn't work? Why did your business fail? We got so many people uh, have started businesses in the past couple years, and they had all that enthusiasm, all that energy, all that damn PPP money, mm -hmm. and they were just ready to, to you know, hit the world ablazing. They started, and the shit didn't work. And now we're going to sit here and look back at it because everyone got a million one excuses. You know, it was Obama, it was Biden, it was Trump, <laughs> it was, you know, you know, uh, uh, the Illuminati, whatever. The pandemic. <laughs> pandemic. COVID right. took me out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I would tell for you, everybody didn't do bad in the pandemic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That's yeah. right. That's right. So, you know, but I do want to have that, y'all serious, I do want to have that discussion why your business didn't work and just kind of go through, you know, different reasons why I feel like a lot of businesses fail and have these challenges and majority of them are caused by the ownership. And that's why we had this because we don't really don't like what blank you know being honest and looking at that man in the mirror because a lot of times you're a true CEO true owner shit you know, you realize stuff happened mm -hmm. and you masters in what pivoting that's right you know that's the thing how it goes and stuff one thing one door closed go to the other door that's right other door closed shit just beat the hell out of make another one down out of, out of the wall <laughs> that's right <laughs> you know when we get down like that we understand that so you know uh, I'm really excited so everybody make sure you know uh, if you got any comments or anything like that. Oh, uh, as far as the topic, please feel free to tune in. If you have anything outside of what we're talking about, why your business failed, why it didn't work out, please hold all your questions and everything to the end of the show. I promise y'all open the floor up for everybody. Well, before we get started, I want to say what's up to my awesome producer, DJ Lab. What's going on, brothers? Uh, yeah. Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. <laughs> right. Hey, man, you boy, you boy out last week, man. Your boy had COVID. <laughs> I was partying so hard <laughs> on birthday. my birthday. <laughs> I don't know which one of them damsels in distress <laughs> was on Mr. Dollar. Right. But, <laughs> God damn. But, <laughs> Say, you have so much fun, you weren't even worried about yeah, it. Yeah, I wasn't even worried about it. <laughs> Party over hell. Right. Damn COVID. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> we outside. <laughs> I woke up last Monday. Oh. Oh. He called me. He said, I, I, can't, I can't even move. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a good time on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> right. You got, it now while you, you got it while you could. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> Boy, I had a good time. But no, nah, man, uh, um, <laughs> I had a blast, though. And uh, I appreciate everybody, you know. Send me well wishes and also, you know, sending me happy birthday shout outs uh, with, you know, last week we did uh, Change the Lives. I did it from the crib, mm -hmm. but I know right before, you know, uh, uh, with the, the the show we had for uh, Mr. Short Dollar, right before the birthday, and everybody gave me a lot of shouts out on all the different short social media platforms. So I do want to tell you guys from the bottom of my heart, I really do appreciate that. Uh, also, said, what's up, Mother Producer Slick 316? What's going on, Reek? Um, Right now, you know, we always rehash the previous week. Um, like I said, guys, I had COVID and everything, so I'm good to go now. Health is a bug. I ain't really have no adverse effects, you know. You know, and a uh, big shout out to UGA Bulldogs. I got my championship oh, shirt. That, that, right that's here. right. That's right. Hold yeah. on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. We got to give him a little clap for that. <laughs> shout out to the <laughs> Took your ass back to reality. Right. They were, right. You know, <laughs> see, they got all excited, you know, saying the SEC championship, kicked their ass for the national championship. So, big shout out to the Georgia Bulldogs. Um, also, guys, you know, next week is the official time when tax season open. The IRS will be accepting returns on Monday, January 24th. Um, you know, uh, I'm super excited. My 21st tax, straight tax season. we super excited. Also, you guys know I'm an accountant by profession. I own. Majestic Business Services. You can find us on the web at www.majesticbiz.com. As always, all the platforms, business websites, uh, contact information, social media platforms are in the description sections of the video. So please feel free to reach out to us. 
or you can Google Majestic Business Services or Google Deontay Burton and all that stuff pop up. So if you need an accounting or tax preparation, please, please, please feel free to reach it, reach out to us. Again, this is my 21st straight tax season. You know, I'm super excited with doing it. And uh, uh, we're ready, you know. 20, 21 years professionally, right? Yeah, 21 years. God damn, boy, it's a long time, boy. It's <laughs> a lot of cussing out. Where's my refund? Right, right. Deontay, did you get my refund? Right, right. You know <laughs> So you must have you must have loved it to keep staying with it for so oh, long, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I loved it. Love taking care of people, and I love making money. So it's a <laughs> match made in heaven, brother. Right, that's right. So, but we are super excited about that. Um, right now, again, it's the Dollar Hour and Deontay Burton, aka Mr. Short Dollar himself. We're streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn. Am I forgetting anything? That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Um, you know the main platform we. Uh, all the information on which I was list over 300 close to almost 400 videos is a YouTube channel Mr. Short Dollar where we talk about personal finance entrepreneurship uh, business and investing um, we cover business operations business management we got a grants playlist with mm -hmm. over 150 grants for you guys to take advantage of it please 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 regardless of what uh, platform we on go to the YouTube channel because that's where the hub for all the videos are like I say I know right now I just post a video you was over half a million dollars in grant opportunities. Mm. Half a million dollars between six different grants. Half a million dollars. And I'm talking about these aren't one grant per person. These are tons of different grants for for each grant, for uh, awards rather for each grant. So please go to the YouTube channel. Mr. Short Dollar. I think that half a million dollar one. We had a one before that. I got a, two or three more going to come out in the next couple of days. Guys, got a lot of great information on Mr. Short Dollar. So please go to the YouTube channel, subscribe to it. And if you are subscribed, Make sure you share that information let everybody know about Mr. Short Dollar, okay? A mm -hmm. uh, lot of great, exciting stuff coming out uh, for this year. But, again, tonight we're talking about why did your business fail, why it didn't work. Mm. Because right now, um, beginning of the year, you have a uh, – last year, was, last year was, was something else because people were getting that funding, and there, it was just something in the air. Mm -hmm. Everybody was an entrepreneur. Right. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, wants to be everybody got their LLC, <laughs> tax ID, everybody was getting logos, right, right. websites. I mean, it, 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 was, it was some shit I never seen before. <laughs> it was something I never seen before. It was a business for that. Oh, man. Everybody and their mama <laughs> had to get that disaster loan. Right. So they were coming to Mr. Deontay to get their schedule C's. Right. Oh, my God. I ain't never seen nothing like it before. And, um, uh, Unfortunately, majority, yeah, I can say majority, got the money, mm -hmm. and they had different reasons. We'll just say, uh, some even sorcerer <laughs> waved their wand around, <laughs> and all that damn money gone. Right. All that money gone. Mm. You know, we'll just say those evil sorcerers were the usual. New yeah. car. <laughs> Lexus dealership. Right. <laughs> Rental center. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Gucci. <laughs> but I was serious as now. Um, uh, a lot of people uh, went headstrong into it, and they, run, they, really, they, re they realized that there's a huge difference between business ownership and working in the business. Mm. And unfortunately, if you don't have the proper structure, the proper planning and a proper mindset going into it, it's going to be extremely challenging. And a lot of times, I could probably look at myself, when you see people like me that have been in the game for a minute, we probably make it look a lot easier than what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I, I try to go out of my way to be honest with people and let people know this shit ain't easy. Right. You know, you want to do this self-employed stuff and everything, mm -hmm. and I love it. That's why we got the channel. But it's why we got free information. That's why we do all this stuff to pe let people know. But I want the first people to tell you, this shit ain't easy. It ain't easy. You got to be built different. You got to think different. You got to move different for you to have success as a, a business owner. Right. You know, that's the thing I think a lot of people found out the hard way. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have challenges in life, as always, you got a decision to make. You can adapt and overcome, or you can get drowned. Mm -hmm. Like we say in the military, sink or swim. Sink or swim. And you... Uh, and a lot of times, because I would say probably if it wasn't really something that you were 
totally into. You may have not a chance to, you know, start it because you had a little cash infusion. Mm -hmm. Cool, let me just go back to my job or go get another job or just put more focus into my job because you might be moonlighting and doing it part time. But then you go back and looking at it, well, I couldn't get people to do this and people didn't want to work and people didn't want to do that and all kind of reasons. Right. And so I want to have an open discussion tonight to discuss that. Okay. Because I done heard all kind of shit. Yeah. <laughs> and what's funny, when I hear people talk about it and they say all these different reasons why they business didn't work, I never, ever hear one word. And that's I. I did Shit, I don't hear nothing. Right. Nothing about what the hell they did. <laughs> or did not do. Because they did it all right. Oh, man. <laughs> we all do it right, Poochie. Come on now. We don't do nothing wrong. My family didn't support it. You know, it's funny because, you know, one of the, one of the main things black folks don't support is black folks couldn't do this. And I do think that you out your damn mind, and I'm just, you know, just being straight up with you, you out your damn mind, if you start a business up and just assume black folks going to buy your stuff. Right. Or you don't necessarily even have an idea of who's going to be buying your stuff. Right. And you done no due diligence. You done uh, no demographics for the, for what you're selling. See who? how many people, <laughs> see how many people selling your due diligence. See how many people selling uh, uh, four finger widgets. You ain't you ain't seen nothing about that. <laughs> and, and with that said, that's why I want to have that discussion today to even you know bring up reasons just like that to kind of look back at it because <clears throat> what I always tell people. We never look. We should never look at fail, uh, things that don't go right as failures. We always want to look at them as, as teaching moments, mm -hmm. learning moments. You can always go back to the lab to say, "Hey, man, look, this is what this is what happened. This is what I didn't do right." Or you can look at it just with COVID. You know, I, I always kind of look at myself. Is that let's go back to what three years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Had a salon. Everything was straight. I had just remodeled it. Had it all looking all grown and sexy and everything. <laughs> all the stuff was there. COVID-19 hit. Right. COVID-19 hit. City College Park made me shut the salon down for mm -hmm. four months. Now, Mr. Tesla, the old Jewish guy that owns the building, he didn't give a damn. I mean, we could have had a tsunami hit. He still <laughs> want his rent money. He want his rent money. <laughs> he want his rent money. <laughs> and I'm like, Mr. Tesla, I can't even open it up. Even when you try to get like disaster assistance and all that other kind of stuff, that mm -hmm. was cool. Right. But you're still talking about an uh, income generated machine that, I, you know, I, I can't even have open. Right. And so what are you supposed to do? You got to pivot. You got to figure a way around it. And, and here's the deal. When you're trying to think about pivoting, it's hard to pivot because you, you, you can't even figure what the hell you can do. Right. My situation was different. The stylists that work in the salon... What did they do? They took their ass home and did hell. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck with a salon with style. I'm getting the calls then. Man, one of the girls, you know, one of the girls moved a damn gunner. <laughs> Who? What the gunner? Oh, gunner. Well, she went to gunner. <laughs> right. I mean, she moved. She had just redid her whole suite. Nice. I know she put probably a grand or two in there and, and, and decided to move to damn Africa. Wow. And I'm just sitting here like, man, my bills are, are mounting and mounting and mounting. And I'm just like, man, what the hell am I going to damn do? Wow. Because then, because, you know, it's, it's one thing to have, a, you know, you got a barbershop or a salon. You know, you, it, there are a lot of stylists and barbers out there. There are not a lot of licensed mm -hmm. stylists and barbers out there. Right. So then you turn around. And then, secondly, there are not a lot of licensed barbers uh, that are out there that have an established clientele where they can consistently be paying you rent. Okay. That's the thing you said now look so if you got people in there, you gotta go over, over and beyond to make sure that comfortable and cool. Right. Now I'm sitting here, I got this damn building. Like on a V hey, I'm telling you. Bill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing shut down. Right. right. Everything did. And I had to just really adjust. Mm. And that's why I had to sit here and just think of other things I could do on there, make videos there. Right. Do all of the kind of stuff in spaces. Then when it came back, how to adjust and everything. And then and it got to a point, man. Especially if I had a um, uh, settlement divorce, just like, you know, your energy don't even be the same. Like, hey, man, who you might want to walk away? Right. Then you spend, and, and, and bring, I say all this to say, I can come back like over a year or two later, like, what could I do differently? Right. What could I move differently? And, 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 and really and truly, some options were there, some weren't there. I might have could have put a little bit more emphasis on 
maybe certain training things or the mm-hmm. other things I could have did, plan Bs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mine wasn't in it and everything. Okay. But a lot of things, even though COVID hit, those were things I could have did to keep it open. Right. You know, people constantly looking for, you know, places to take videos and movies and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Things you, you know, with a clear conscience you can think about. But I had to go back and self assess myself and look at it. So your heart wasn't in it. Man, my heart went in my damn mind, damn sure went in it. Right. You know, that, that that's really what, you know, what it was, too. But I can honestly look back and say, like, Poochie could have did a couple other things to keep it, you know, uh, uh, keep things moving where it wouldn't have been as stressful. I can honestly say that, you know. And um, uh, I look back at um, uh, the tax business during the pandemic. Um, when it hit, I had always offered well, at least for the past seven, eight years, virtual and remote services. Okay. But everybody, like, what, is, what, 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 what that is? Right. Well, you know, we do Google Hang, we can do Google Hangouts. Uh, Zoom was new, mm-hmm. uh, but most of it was Google Hangouts. You know, you do that on there. You know, so most most people, I would say 95% of people, now nah, that's okay, whatever. You I know, see you in person. Either I want to see you in person, or I just drop my stuff off, but they don't want to do no kind of, right. you know, virtual stuff. Pandemic hit. Mm-hmm. H&R Block, Jackson, you and all them hit. I put about two thousand dollars in Google Ads and Facebook Ads, mm-hmm. virtual services, mm-hmm. cause we had no learning curve, dude, cause that's how we got down. Right. Hey man, business exploded. Right. Three hundred percent. Three hundred percent. But that was a classic case where I know a lot of places because they went pivoting, they didn't know how to adjust. They were just in reaction mode. They were kind of stuck. And I was sitting there, look, I made. Probably the, uh, 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 the summation of what I did in about the previous two years mm-hmm. in about a month and a half mm-hmm. because everybody, you know, at the end of the day, they had a pandemic. Everybody wanted their uh, income tax money. Right. But Jay, uh, uh, H&R Block and Jackson U were closed. Mm. Man, I, I, uh, I got fat just off that little uh, four or five mile circumference around my office. Oh, okay. Yeah, just putting money into that. Okay. You know, because people couldn't go anywhere. Okay. But again, we talking about adjusting and pivoting things you could have did right. And that was one of the things that stuck with me with that. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was just a, a lot of people had to make a lot of adjustments. So we didn't afford it to getting that disaster money. We just talking about when that stuff hit, right. how everything stopped. Like and simultaneously. It was everything. Right. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, we do know what your bills did. Yeah. And you had to, at that point, make a conscious decision. What am I going to do? Right. And I'm just talking about two things that were going on in my life, my salon and my tax business. And I'm sitting one of them, I just was like, shit, I don't even know if I want to deal with this. And the other one, like, I seen a world of opportunities. Mm-hmm. Both situations, I'm still capping at the tank. You know, everything's still going through me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Take full credit all the money I made during that tax season. Right. And I got to take full blame for everything I did do at with that salon. Right. Even though, you know, College Park came in there with a, with a hammer. <laughs> they shut it down they, and and they boarded it up. That whole shopping center. Mm-hmm. And it was funny, I did a YouTube, I did a live out there, how I was just walking around. It was just amazing, like six months later, that same place they were given like ridiculous terms mm-hmm. for commercial spaces. Wow. You know, because they just trying to fill everything back in. Not they no more. And just a, didn't adjust a damn thing on my lease. You know. <laughs> <laughs> he was already at there. You got to got mm-hmm. deal with it. But is it, so you look around now, it's a little bit more prosperous already. Yeah, but see, that's one thing I tell people too. And it's real talk. Never been through the Great Depression. Uh, uh, we Majestic survived the market crash 07, 08. Three Sun Commercial Services didn't. Now mm-hmm. my cleaning company mm-hmm. it didn't didn't hell no, hell no. That's a, that's that's a whole another story. And um, uh, with that, and I'm about to talk about that later on the show. But um, if you can make it through that damn pandemic with success, shit ain't nothing you can't do. Oh, okay. Oh, there's nothing I can't do. Right. Just to get through that, that did so much for my confidence. I ain't going through a divorce at the same time. Oh, Lord. It's a double whammy. Oh, man. I came. I felt like Bruce Lee. <laughs> I was going to say Superman, but yeah, Bruce Lee would do. <laughs> Bruce Lee would do. But, it, but, it, but it, it was cool. But I really just want to have that conversation because so many people 
endured so many things in the past year. So, and because you know, like I said, that energy, man, that was some that twenty well, twenty twenty when them texts were coming in, mm -hmm. boy, everybody was getting hyped for that money. Mm -hmm. Everybody, and it was so cool to see it. You had the great resignation starting. Everybody, damn it, you know, f my job. I'm gonna start door dashing <laughs> and and doing all kind of stuff, Ubering and stuff. It was just cool. Right. You got that nine dollar now warehouse. Want to give you twenty five dollars? I mean, the world just was like, what the hell <laughs> going on? <laughs> McDonald giving signing bonuses. Right. Everything was just cool. And um, now we going to a point where things are subsiding. And now, if you didn't do the right things. Now you're sitting there trying to pick up the pieces. Uh, starting back where you, where you began, right? Shit. At scratch. Shit, started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are here, here, shit. Right. But I do want to have that discussion. So we started looking at it and, and trying to figure it out. Why did your business fail? So I want to give you guys a discussion in regards to what I think are some of the common reasons a lot of businesses fail. Why a lot of businesses, and again, most of these reasons, well, really all these reasons, mm -hmm come back to decisions that the owner didn't do. Okay. Owner didn't make, I'm sorry, decisions the owner didn't make or things they didn't do, okay? So the first thing I want to sit here and just be straight up with you, and I think this is very important, a lot of businesses incur a lot of financial hurdles. Mm -hmm. Okay, when I say financial hurdles, a lot of things come up because people start being so what they don't have enough money. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough money. That's one that, or, you know, people, they do, to me, do it ass backwards. I always tell businesses all the time and all these videos and everything, get access to capital when you don't need it. Get all that funding together. Say, so start these businesses up, and they put so much focus on the aesthetics and the outside, but they don't know put a focus on working capital. Mm -hmm. You know, just being able to subside yourself for six months to a year, covering all your costs, having all that stuff together. Um, pretty much start every damn thing off broke. Mm -hmm. Start everything off broke. And the business is there, and the, the the enthusiasm have you, okay, I've been doing this for a couple of years. I sell a couple of these pies. I sell a couple of these gift baskets. Everybody like it. But when you moonlighting with something and you're actually doing it, it's a whole different mentality. It's a whole different stress. Mm -hmm. So now you don't say, hey, made a commitment and start doing it full time or doing it even part time. And you put money into it, and it's, just, it's not happening the way you had planned. And what you done did is you done messed around and got you a lease. You done messed around and got you a loan. You done got these things that you got to pay on. And you like, hey, man, I, the money ain't coming to do that. Um, I don't, I think maybe enough, we won't really know the real true impact until maybe a year or so from now. I think a lot of that going to be able to, you know, show probably with uh, uh, bankruptcy filings and stuff like that. But. Most time people just start off, they don't have everything together. They don't have, like I said, they start off broke, don't have no money, don't have no access to capital, don't have any resources to keep them subsiding. Well, let me ask you a question about financial hurdles. Do you think that also, the, as we say, the decisions that they make or don't make, where you start making them when they start, well, let's say the business does start making a little money, and they, let's say they might have been in a 500 square foot, little space, still making a decent amount of money, making whatever they do, they, they're able to make the customers happy. Start making a little bit of money, decide they need a 2,000 square foot space. You know what I'm saying? Then you yeah. start, ah, we don't need them plastic spoons. We need to get sterling silver spoons. You know, yeah. just upgrade. Uh, you know, upgrading your business is good, but okay. upgrade to the point to where they haven't done any financial analysis of it and says, you know, this 500 square foot space, I'm paying two thousand dollars a month this two thousand square foot space i'm gonna be paying somewhere around ten thousand dollars a month instead of just saying that they thinking of the aesthetics of how it's gonna look when the customers come in and not financially adding up how it's gonna how the pockets are gonna look once that rent is paid well that's a good question a lot of times what people don't do everything that you do in business should be some kind of roi mm -hmm. return on investment where you're looking at okay if we remodel we revamp example with a salon. I had went years, I hadn't bought new stuff. So I said, okay, let me buy some new tables, new chairs, uh, put some paint on the wall, have it looking a lot more feminine and everything. Uh, I wasn't expecting an immediate ROI return on that investment, but because really what I felt was, I was really, 
when I use the word getting over, mm -hmm. I should have been damn did it. Right. Because I make so much money with the other stuff, it was just time to kind of like reward everybody right. with some new stuff. And it didn't hurt me. Right. If that makes sense. I get what you're saying. But you, it, it, it's a funny line. It, 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 it's, a, it's a funny line you got to walk where you know, understand that you put money back into your business, but also understanding that some things just ain't going to come back to you. Give you an example. When you see certain times people open up, just say open up a salon, open up barbershops especially. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of brothers open up the barbershop and they got everything you need, the right. TVs and, and, and again, you, and guys, keep in mind, I got the course how to start your own salon and barbershop coming out this summer. Um, one of the key questions, key questions that is never asked to a salon, a salon owner has to ask is who your customer is. Mm -hmm. And they see the two people. If you charge booth rent, sweet fee, your customer is the barber or beautician. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're doing commission, it's the people. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people don't ask themselves that simple question. So your whole, when you're spending money, the determining factor of your customer is who you're going to make happy. You'll do things to make the barber beautician happy or do things to make the customers come out of the street happy. Right. And that, that kind of guides your decision. And what happens is a lot of times, and you have potential to make more money with the commission side, mm -hmm. but it's just more work to stay on top of, okay. right? Right. So I say that, and most stylists and barbers prefer to just pay booth rent mm -hmm. because they feel if they bring the people in, they, they should get all the, mo all the money. Right. The issue comes up if you're in a situation where you're just charging booth rent or salon suite, it's a flat amount. So if you get $100 a week, $150, $200 a week, that's all you're going to damn get. Right. So if you don't put in X amount of dollars in aesthetics, uh, angels, pin water, <laughs> all kind of marble bowls and right. all this high-end stuff, man, it may take you damn two years to just to uh, uh, recoup them fees back. Mm -hmm. I mean, a after regular operating costs. Okay. And most people don't understand that. Mm. They want to have it looking nice and everything. Like I said, you go to some of these barbershops, you're like, man, this is... Uh, yeah, it's man, nice. this is nice. <laughs> but the guys will never make their damn money back. Right. They'll never make their money back because they're getting a flat amount coming in. Fair rent. And, the, and, and that profit has to cover regular operating costs. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while for you to get just recoup those initial startup costs. Mm -hmm. No thought process is ever giving them back. Mm. None. And to be honest with you, that's why most of them don't last that long. Right. That's the, that's, that's the main reason because the majority of them are are started by barbers and beauticians and they they're not business folks mm -hmm. you know not saying they ain't worked in the business for years but just understanding certain business concepts what to spend and what don't to spend they just oblivious to it mm -hmm. and um that's what i want to you know to answer your question uh about that a lot of times most people don't right now, how do you how do you get around that you know again you know meet with your consultants meet mm -hmm. with your accountants and everything you have to be realistic about what you do what you know and what you don't know Right. And be cool with that. Yeah. And be cool with that. Like Dion says, pay the man. <laughs> pay the man. Shit, pay just the pay man. the man. Right. You know, stop, stop trying to do every damn thing. Just you know? pay him. Just pay him and stuff, you know. <laughs> Dion take all them alphabets after his name. Pay that man for that shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just thinking about the financial part. And I, I know a lot of times we all want our place of business, uh, our, our business that we own as mm -hmm. entrepreneurs to be pleasing to the eye, just, just in general, you know, no matter what you're doing, your location, you know, all that stuff, you know, red carpet coming from the curb to the, into the building, all that kind of stuff we want, but we don't take into consideration, once we do those upgrades, the profit that we were making when we were at the other space is going to be depleted a lot less, and we're not going to be able to do certain other things that we normally would be able to do, you know, in our business, because we didn't move, we didn't, you know, uh, Tripled our, our rent our rent amount a month, you know. Then triple rent. I mean, but even just doing any kind of front end math, mm -hmm. to understand like I gotta do this to cover this, right? You know, I already know how many return tax returns I have to do mm -hmm. to for, for for to cover my monthly operating costs. Right. I know that, and if, until I get to that number, hell, I'm sweating. Mm. So we have to know that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you ought to know there's a number attached to how many widgets you gotta sell. How many chickens you got to get rid of? Mm -hmm. How many burgers? All it, it's something attached to that, and if you know that, you can move better. Right. But just sitting there 
hoping somebody, you know, you know, tax time, you ever see that little uh, Statue of Liberty and uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Uncle Sam? Yes. Out of Bo uh, Jackson. Spinning spin, spin the, spin the sign. They got them jokes out there. And a piece of, what's that, uh, uh, Little Caesars and some other place. They had jokes out there popping in there. Right. Like, Look at that damn Sambo. <laughs> out there just. Bo jangling. It got your attention. Huh? It got your attention. Yeah, it got you but in the wrong to, damn right. way. And they get our attention to say, man, we need to go. I, did, I want a pizza right now. Didn't, didn't do that, but it still got your attention. Mm-hmm. Damn, love that. But look at, <laughs> look at your damn Django. Django out right there just. <laughs> Don't get old one fool out there. They be out there spinning and everything. Right. Boy, I get, boy, I tell you. No, nah, we're not I doing that you. one, brother. We're not uh, doing that one. <laughs> <laughs> not doing that, but I get your point. But that, but that in itself is a cost to that business. Absolutely. And I bet you, you go in there and say, maybe the corporate people may know, but you go in there and ask an entrepreneur, well, how much does that cost you per hour, per customer, to have that guy out there spending that sign? They couldn't tell you. Well, the reason why most times they ain't going to be able to tell you, because they be so desperate. They be down there want to try everything. Right. You know, just do anything. Well, you know, damn near tell them, well, just put a gun on somebody. Tell them to come on in. <laughs> Kidnap somebody and bring them on in. <laughs> right. Right. You know, boy, I tell you. But, you know, just really knowing, like I said, just, just uh, uh, financial hurdles, I think one of the, uh, the first thing they kind of stumble for. Is, uh, again, tonight we're talking about why your business has failed, what you, why it didn't work. And I'm giving you some of my main reasons I think small businesses fail. Um, the second one being, and this is very, very important, is ineffective management. Again, ineffective management. Guys, you need to understand, uh, family friends are probably the worst place to start. Right. We have uh, employees. Reggie Clark said we snitching. We snitching? <laughs> yeah, but we, the, but people need to hear it. Snitching on what? The business aspect of, I guess, the business aspect. He just said we snitching. No, 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 no. We ain't snitching, we ain't lightning. But hey, Miss Mix Alive. Hey, my name's Show. Hey, Slick. What's going on, everybody? What's going on, everybody? With the Richard Clark. Yeah. But uh, now, nah, brother, we ain't snitching and everything, but we really just, you know, uh, 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 <laughs> sometimes people hear certain things and kind of hit the wrong way. <laughs> sometimes you know? it need to be hit. Yeah, they nobody, need to be hit. Nobody don't really want to. We all done did it. We done made bad moves. Don't, you know, that shit just feel like you feel bad. We don't make no, I told you early in the show, we don't make no bad moves. Black folks don't support us. Nah, that's man. what it is. But that's like going to, we're well, going to number two is ineffective management. Mm-hmm. You put your family and friends, you know, your, your son who ain't doing shit, and I'm going to get him a job. I'm tired of getting his damn money every damn right. month. He going to come work for he me. He going to come work for me. Right. And I got him at my damn front desk running everybody out because he, he on the phone, he texting, uh-huh. he got all kind of stuff, music playing, right. cu- cussing, <laughs> everything. Make people so damn uncomfortable and, you know, just run everything away. And then you doing it because, like I said, you want to keep them busy. Mm-hmm. You know, you, 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 you're tired of helping your girlfriend out. Right. So you got her in there working, and she ain't trying to do nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. She, nothing. She, um, she giving everybody else headaches because she your girl. Mm. And she feel like she own the business. Uh-uh. <laughs> Sister done started her car. Her, Transportation business. <laughs> that sister got a transportation business. Right. And I'm gonna put my boo and let him drive the truck. truck. <laughs> oh shit. Oh Lord. Right, right. He running lights like a mother. <laughs> he running lights, right. getting pulled over because he got the gas and us smoking, <laughs> blowing everything. Right, right. He geeked up in there, you know, all kind of stuff. And People, you're putting wrong people in there managing and running your business mm-hmm. because you're cutting corners and you feel like, okay, I got a vision. And it's a good vision. Mm-hmm. But because <clears throat> you don't want to take the time or the money to get the proper people in place. Mm-hmm. And you know that the people that you're putting in there, you love them, you care about them, and they're good people, but they got no damn business around your stuff. Right. They got no damn business around your stuff. Rule of thumb, if you would not bring that person to work right beside you and, your, to, and your, if your job was on the line, mm-hmm. would you bring them into your job and your job on the line and you know they were going to mess up? Because mm. we all got people who are family who are like, okay, I want to get them a job. Right. You know, you think about, okay, yeah, I'm going to call them in. But you know 
you know they like, man, I don't know the iffy or not. Mm-hmm. But if your job depended on it, would you bring them on? Mm. Would you bring them on? Mm. I've had people, you know, just, you know, you know, uh, over the years, you know, just like, especially with uh, uh, rental properties. And, you know, like, okay, you know, I'm such and such cousin, I'm such and such aunt. And they told me, give you a call, say you had a house vacant. Okay, cool. This is before I had a property manager. Mm. And I just remember, like, okay, then I called a person. Hey, man, you know, your cousin called me, your aunt called me, you know, everything, yeah. I said, because people know how I am. Mm-hmm. Would you vouch for them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know with me, Lab, right. you got one damn time to mess that up. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to. Yeah, but I can tell you right now, and I'm talking about I already did the credit check history. They done got all kind of evictions, mm-hmm. credit shot like hell. So you call your people to say, hey, man, just, they went through a divorce. Mm-hmm. They were sick, this, that, and that. Give them benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. I every damn time I did that, it blew up in my damn face. <laughs> every time, right? Every time, and the times that I was sitting there trying to be, I'm just speaking in it. You talking about what? Well, Fifteen years been in real estate investing. Mm-hmm. Once I got out of the landlord stuff, mm-hmm. and I got a property manager, mm-hmm. and let her be the butt, right? Because I couldn't, you know, hey, real talk, lad, real talk, you know. It wasn't even about no uh, flirting or anything with me. You know, you just hear the human stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, my wife's sick. My husband got laid off. Pulling you know, Yeah, they, they pulling, yeah. Damn, okay. And me, got four or five different things going on. I let you, you know, pay me late with rent. But I'm on something else. I done forgot to get it. Your ass damn sure reminded me. <laughs> and next thing you know you're a month behind and you're two months behind mm-hmm. now we got work out payment plans all the while i got other stuff to deal with right um uh, man that was hell once i got a property manager in place cloud nine baby right cloud nine but that's me speaking personally about myself and i wasn't being cheap man i just really just feel like i had a damn mm-hmm. time I, I, uh, good evening shawnette martin uh do you think that the uh reason why we may go with our family members or may go with a referral for certain things is because we feel like, you know, our family won't shortchange. Like, you know, we'd we be protected if we hire our family because we're scared to hire a stranger because we don't know the stranger. Or we go, you know what I'm saying? It's just it's just a lot of variables that may play into that as to why people do that. Oh, a referral yeah. is easy. I know, I know, I know, uh, I know Deontay. So if Deontay say he cool, then I'm going to go with it because Deontay ain't never done nothing to make me think otherwise. And it's just, you know what I'm saying, I feel safe going this than having a stranger come living, the, you know, because he may knock the walls out of, you know what I'm saying, burn the place down. So sometimes I think a lot of uh, our fears play into the fact of hiring our, hiring our family members to run our business or manage our business and taking referrals from certain people because it's just we know that person – from the business that they do with us? Uh, it's rainbow of reasons, and I do think everyone you say is a good reason. What I will say this is that uh, once it didn't happen to you and, and shit didn't work, don't be a damn fool and do it again. Uh, throw that bone at your family member sometime. Like, hey, man, if it don't work, you're going to better pay me this? Mm-hmm. Or your little friend referring you, hey, bro, look, if they don't, you know, would you vouch for them, pay their last month rent, or pay, the, or pay some kind of thing if it don't mm-hmm. work out? Hell no. <laughs> no, 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 you get that. That's how they go. Because I started doing that, throwing that out there. Not to ask for it, but just to see right. the reaction. Um, people, unfortunately, would know they ain't going to be able to do right, right and sit there and just lie to you. And see, my name show just said we know that when our people ain't, ain't shit. Yeah. But at the same time, we may know, but we will still give them the benefit of the doubt. Because what you just said, the, the son ain't been doing nothing the whole time, but I'm going to go ahead and get him to work for me because I feel like if he work for me, he's going to do a little better. Yeah. It's, it, 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 and the thing that is, they've been ruined everything you don't work hard for. Mm. All your relationships, all your money, and at the end of the day, they can't do nothing for you. Mm. They can't do nothing for you. You're sitting there looking stupid. Mm. And, you know, I, I always say this. Try. Because I, I, I would not be in the position I am in right now if people didn't give me a chance. Right. I remember my first corporate job. Um, I mean, I went to like three or four damn interview, real talk, lab, and just like, did you have experience like this? You know, I'm straight out of bank here. I ain't, right. you know, no no connections, no referrals. Though I be so adamant about networking and everything now, none of that shit. And uh, uh, J.C. may be, 
I remember JC, he just like, he had his dad and that older white guy, and he was just looking at me. He was 150% accountant, mm -hmm. super conservative. Mm -hmm. I just said, man, look, I done been on about five, six interviews. Hey, look, man, damn this. I just need a chance. Right. Shit, man, look, I don't have any damn experience. Right. I just need a chance. This is, man, over 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Bro, I just, need, I just need a shot. I just need a shot, right. I, you know. And uh, he, JC gave it to him. I never let him down. He taught me a lot, too. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, so I'm, I'm speaking in terms of I was given that shot. Right. Because I had no kind of damn pedigree, no kind of resources. Right. And I had to just sit here like, look, man, shit, I ain't going to get let somebody give it to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I was humble enough to be like, look, man, just give me a shot. I will not let you down. And um, that happened for me. So I'm very conscious of that when other people need it. Mm -hmm. And I do a real good job of reading, folks. Right. Because I know what question to ask and what, you know, this, that, and that. And you learn that out of, uh, of it. So even with that, say you know your people a certain way. Mm -hmm. But you got to be realistic because at the end of the day, when your shit sink, can they help you? And we all love our family, love our friends, but that's one of the things with me, and as, as people that are close to me know me, like, I'm not gonna lose anything I got behind your ass. Right. And that's anything. My mother would tell you that. <laughs> like, real talk, man. Yeah, hey, 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 my, hey, yeah. hey, my mama would tell you that. Like, look, man, I'm a, I look out for my family, I look out for my friends, but this, this shit, I, I work too hard for it. Right. We ain't gonna let it sink. And you know the people that, you know, at the end of the day, okay, cool, I can get you some help. But your family and your friends love you and they care about you. But can they help you if shit go left? Mm -hmm. And if you know they can't help you, your override decision, you got to be like, look, man, I can't do it. Because if it go left and it don't work, they can't help me. Mm -hmm. They can want to help me. They can want the best. They can pray, man. They can have, they can do a, a, a hell of a fish fry. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, dog, at the end of the day, if they can't, help you get out of that hole, shit, you better do the right damn thing. What's right. your conscience is really telling you to do? Going to hide that other guy. Going to mm -hmm. go in this direction. Now, you do everything right, you make them come back and help them. But at that point, you just can't do it. And too many times, like I said, you went in these places, they got, they, like I said, the son, mm -hmm. the girlfriend, niece and nephew, and I mean, it's just running all your customers away. Mm -hmm. And not only running your customers away, make it where no one else will ever come back to you because people are spreading the word yeah, about you, it's, man. This word can be spread too quick nowadays. Well, think about it. The good part about reviews is what? Uh, you can go and look at it and stuff like that. But most of the time, people just put, you do have people that put in great, it was great place, this, that, and that. But most of the time, we ain't going to put a review when you piss the hell off. Right. So I'm an avid review. Yeah. So, I, rev I read some reviews yeah, before but you, I go anywhere. But you get what I'm saying. So people can put their experience on there and stuff like that and you sitting there like damn you know and it's because you get know you got the damn food mm -hmm. your son mm -hmm. at the desk doing what he doing and everything he don't give a damn mm -hmm. he don't want to be there anyway and you don't lost everything you don't work for because of that and understand what management is all about having the right person in there that can actually groom and develop it groom and develop people uh -huh. know how to actually plan uh plan uh implement Knowing that, what, how many people need to be on the clock, how, how many how things should be ordered, mm -hmm. all kind of stuff. Pro, what did I say, Larry? No, I'm gonna say I'm just I, I'm gonna slash something in there, but finish your. But finish you know, just statement. management is so important because when you get people in there, you have to. You know, you see bars and restaurants all the time. People can cook. Boy, they be cooking some good food in the back, but they got this young person that they got waiting these tables. They mm -hmm. have not put no kind of money. And the training the waiters mm -hmm. and the training the waitresses. You waiting damn near half an hour on a drink and all that. They fine. They mm -hmm. fine. They got the girls with both butt cheeks hanging out. Right. But I'm waiting a damn hour for my drink. Right. And they have not taught them how to come back. Y'all okay? Y'all thirsty? Y'all want mm -hmm. some more? You got money. You probably have, you, 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 you don't tell them how you feeling. You might want to do all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But you waiting, you waiting, you waiting. But you see. Four or five waitresses in the corner, they all on Instagram right. taking pictures. <laughs> like, damn, man, can I get another drink? I had I had that problem recently. <laughs> yeah, but you, you get what I'm saying? And you're losing, you're losing, you're losing. Then you got the guy at the bar, he just pouring it up. He right. just listening to the music. All his friends. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> you know? But let me ask you a question about management. Do you think, the, I think the proper management in this place, it should be to where you don't have to come, like, you see entrepreneurs, they run in the business, they run small business, they have managers in place, but they up there all day or they up there every day. Proper management is where you don't have <laughs> to come up there unless you just need to. Because well, you, you are sure that things are going to be in place, but also 
also you have trained them proper enough to where if an emergency does come up you know it may not need your assistance in it well i don't think that's pro i think that's proper ownership mm -hmm. proper ownership that's what i well, mean you're to come yeah, right that's there. what i meant ownership. But you got the right now you're right but if you got effective management mm -hmm. like I say it's running mm -hmm. and what's the key to that guys what's the key to that if you got a proper management proper structure in place you got to be realistic with the concept that the business made five dollars and you brought home two mm -hmm. because you done took care of everybody mm -hmm. and you bring back two or one dollars but you ain't doing a damn thing to get it and the key is here's the deal if you got the proper structure ramp, uh, in place and you bring it home that one or two dollars you can actually implement that same structure at five or ten other places a la mcdonald franchises mm -hmm. a la bird king or where are your different franchises and you're making all this money and you ain't did a damn thing but roll out of bed in the morning right that's why franchises cost so much money, they never lose value because the system is already in place. Right, right. You just got to make sure you got the money to put up for it. You don't see no damn McDonald's owners in there making no damn burgers. Right. The system is there. Mm -hmm. They just got to have, they just want you to make sure you got enough money to get it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. You got to have effective management. Pay for the right person to run your business. Pay for the right training for your people. Mm -hmm. Send them a custom service class. Send them, you know, come on now. How the hell can a Chick-fil-A make the money that they making? Think about this. Mm -hmm. they, they they make the money that they make, and they, and they don't even, they ain't open seven days a week. Right. Right? And they're not even open. Are they close 10 o'clock? Or Chick-fil-A? They close at 9. 9 o'clock. They close at 9 o'clock, and they oh, and they close on Sunday. And look at the margin. They're charging a, a, a way high, pro they're making a high profit margin to everybody because they put so much money in the customer service and training. Mm -hmm. Think about it. What did I say, Larry? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. You know, and, and that's they the keep thing. Keep that I, line moving, though. No, nah, but now, <laughs> you, well, 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 that's the thing about it. Knowing, well, you know, you know, my my master's in supply chain management, and we had several execs come talk to us. You know, the headquarters in uh, Union City, with the family Union City, they were coming over to Clay State, just talking to us, how they just look so put so much in the supply chain management in regards to how how much time from the time you hit the lot, knowing when you get the line, order and getting out. You know, we mm -hmm. talking about a minute and a half. They're looking right. at. Right. And those are the kind of things where you got proper management in place, understanding that, you that know. Just business in, in general. I mean, I, I I don't have a master's in supply chains. Mine isn't just business administration, but um, we were told the same thing. You know, you have to have a time limit on a certain amount of time because customers don't want to be standing in line for five and ten minutes. They they want to get in there and get out, especially especially drive through customers for you know customers that's maybe sitting in their car because they're sitting in their car for a reason. They're sitting there. You know, if you have. It, it, they could care less if you have the best widgets in town. If they got to sit there for 10 minutes to get it, they can go, they'll go somewhere else where the widgets may not be but medium. You get what I'm saying? Well, you know, you got a term of, uh, what is it, reject and renege. Mm -hmm. Well, when the people can walk into a restaurant and they see a line, they just get the hell out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or they, how long they're going to wait before they even leave. And psychologically, we all just go in there, you know, find out, you know, how long, you know, how long to wait. Mm -hmm. uh, two hours. Damn, you know, we're, right. we're doing that and stuff. Uh, unless you really, really want to go there, people ain't going to do it. You lose the money because mm -hmm. you still got the same amount of staff, the same bills and stuff <laughs> like that going. Come on now. So you, you, you the, 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 the straight operating costs still the same because mm -hmm. you got less people coming in now, but you're still paying payroll. Right. Come on now. And you're going to keep the payroll the same because you're expecting the people to come there anyway. Yeah, and plus your overhead is still going to be the same. Right. You know, it's still water like gas, still going to be the same. So. You just got to be smart enough to, you know, make sure you got the right people in place. And you, right. you know, that ineffective management will really bite your ass if you don't get on top of that. Mm -hmm. It really will bite your ass, you know, without doing that. Again, we're talking about, you know, why did, why your business didn't work? Why did your business fail? I just want to go over, you know, reasons why. I know personally <clears throat> a lot of businesses don't pan out. And like I said, again, I want to have that open discussion because a lot of times people, when things don't work out for them, they got to meet in one reason outside of themselves why not and the third one i want to talk about is poor business planning this right here is the one i think kills a lot of people uh especially in our community because people have the the, the energy and desire to do it but they don't want to do any any front-end planning mm. any front-end planning we're doing that's one of the first things i always tell people even when you um i, got, I learned a lot in uh business development because i did um a lot of work with um, my SBA counselors back in the early 2000s, going over uh, effective business planning and all that kind of stuff. And uh, a lot of times, you know, we learn so much from that front end, you know, projecting and forecasting and planning, looking at your costs and stuff like that. People don't want to look at that. Right. 
people know that they got it. They'll say, okay, I got to pay water, light, and gas, mm -hmm. but don't want to call and see how much for this right. square footage, well, how much would that cost, you know, get get insurance or, or quotes mm -hmm. before the end, kind of no idea, knowing market payroll and stuff, and not having the numbers together. And what happens is two things, either overestimating everything or underestimating everything. They always we, they All over the damn place right. and not knowing. And most of the time it's the latter. Everybody underestimates. Yeah, I was just about to say, we always underestimate yeah. everything. And when you do that, you get knee deep in it. We, well, we go back to number one. You ain't having no money set up. Mm -hmm. And then it costs way more money than what you thought it going to be. And you SOL. Mm -hmm. And now you're sitting there trying to just, you, 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 you don't got this business together. So now your ass going into your 401k you had saved. Mm -hmm. You're pawning your, your daughter uh, 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 toys and <laughs> pawning the Xbox and taking the other damn loan out on the house and all this other kind of stuff. And all kind of damn turmoil. Mm -hmm. Not because stuff happens, because you didn't make decisions to kind of maybe put things off another six months to a year to sit here and say, look, let me get everything together. Let me get, because this is really what this is going to cost me. You'll never have everything covered. Mm -hmm. Stuff going to happen. Stuff going to pop up. But if you're doing a, a good job of spending time and doing your homework, you'll be okay. Um, I think people stay vague on purpose. Yeah, proper they, due diligence, though. Proper due diligence at what you're stating now is, uh, is is key to a lot of things. You know, when we used to build, when I used to manage and build those shopping centers, mm -hmm. you know, we used to do due diligence down to, you know, we do per capita income, how much the income was, will it, will it sustain this shopping center? I mean, before we even, you know, broke any ground, before we even did anything else, we did a due diligence on the on the cost effectiveness of the shopping center, how many miles away from the, from the shopping center we about to build is this anchor store, you know, just certain things that you, you wouldn't think that go into a shopping center before it pops up. I mean, we, we probably six, seven months just doing that stuff. Well, why would a person not do proper due diligence? Right. I'm asking you, why, so why do you think a person wouldn't do that? Because they think they just got, they think it's going to sell regardless. Well, that, plus, you know, kind of what I was just mentioning, uh, people stay vague on purpose. Right. People, see, folks. I, don't, I didn't know. Yeah, and people think that shit protect them. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, nobody didn't tell me. And that's no damn excuse. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't sit there and you think that, okay, you know it's so much that you don't know. And like I said, you're not going to be prepared for everything. Mm -hmm. But if you sit there and once you get knee deep into it, like, woo, this is a whole lot more than I thought it was going to be, cool. You're going to make a decision. You're either going to embrace it or you're going to skip over it. Mm -hmm. Have you skip over from whatever you're going to do. You quit it. Or just move forward without not knowing it. And I'm not one of those people um, that uh, I can honestly say I do, I, I do uh, 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 overanalyze or not. Because I'm an accountant, most accountants, we're, we're analytical people. So we call it analysis paralysis. So I do get sometimes caught into a lot of stuff where I probably need to move forward a little quicker. Mm -hmm. But I'm always kind of make sure I got everything covered. Uh, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing and stuff because I have missed out on opportunities of doing it, but I also have saved my tail a lot of time because I have did it. I don't think a person needs to dig deep in the weeds like I do, but I do think you need to try to make sure that you make a commitment to cover and get as much information as possible. You got to cross those T's and dot those I's, though. Yeah. Because my professor always said when I was in when I was in college, he always said that um, even if you may feel like you're doing too much, but even if you feel like you're doing too much, it still won't probably won't be enough. Because you gotta, you gotta, you, you you gotta take into them variables when you when you're doing business, when you own the business. You, there's variables that may come <coughs> that you may not even expect, even though you've done your due diligence on that. It still may come up. It's yeah. something still may happen that the due diligence did not cover. Yeah. So, I was always told, even if you're prepared, you're probably not really prepared. Yeah. Because there's gonna be a lot of things that's gonna happen that you're that you that you're just not gonna foresee. Yeah, and you you can't take, don't ever confuse market research. Or like lab say, doing due diligence confused with being scared. Mm -hmm. See, that's that bullshit. I mean, that, that BS that people say a lot of times. Well, you can't be scared. You can't do this, that, and that. Well, at the end of the day, look, you out here making money. <laughs> you one thing. It's one thing to make money. I don't think nobody got problem making money. Right. But yeah, man, I don't think nobody want to be in a situation losing money. Right. And when you don't went out here and lost some change and stuff like that. Now you bought it. I done lost a lot. I made a lot of money, but I damn sure I lost a lot of money. And when you have lost and you have to come back. It teaches you 
to, 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 to be realistic about some of them traps and stuff. So you want to make sure that, again, you don't miss out on no opportunity to equip yourself with enough information to protect yourself, to protect mm -hmm. your business, to protect your family. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to sit here and do a lot, as much planning as possible, okay? Um, the next one is no marketing whatsoever. When we start talking about marketing, we, we talk about the whole thing of knowing exactly. Marketing is, I won't get marketing and advertising confused. Marketing, advertising is actually promoting your business out um, to a different businesses. Matter of fact, I got a video on Mr. Short Dollar, how to advertise the short dollar way. I broke down the whole, my whole system on how to advertise from a, a, a grassroots standpoint to a social media standpoint. So check out that video, how to advertise the short dollar way. Marketing is different. Marketing is what kind of what Lab said before in regards to understanding the demographics, who's who wants your mm -hmm. product, how what color are they? You know, you're looking at, you got a product, and you got and you look at say, that is my customer. Right. You know, they're a, a, a 45 to 55 year old black man. They make this amount of money. They on this side. They drive this car. They interested in this, that, and that. You know your ideal customer. That's mm -hmm. who wants that. All your major corporations spend so much money in marketing, marketing because they know. Yeah, because it, it was funny. I remember in college where you were looking at um, uh, the different uh, car manufacturers mm -hmm. from just say like Toyota. They know the Corolla was for the, the college kid mm -hmm. and the, uh, the young adult. Then you might upgrade to uh, a Camry. Mm -hmm. Then depending on where you get in life, you know, that might be a Camry may be from let's say 30, 28 to 34, 35, mm -hmm. you progress a little more, now you got a Lexus. Mm -hmm. And then they may go, you know, up in from there. You know, so it was just a matter of knowing that, hey, where you progressing, at, you know, where you at from that demographic. Mm -hmm. And doing that research, knowing at each age, each stage in life what you want. And, you know, if you, no matter what you're doing, if you're selling certain clothes, mm -hmm. if you're selling certain foods, candies, or whatever, understanding that demographic, that market, what we're doing it. And far too often, people are making and selling shit or services, and they have no idea who wants it. Right. Who wants it? Who the demographic is. Who, yeah. Right. Just, just the, and, and here's the deal. You might got a great product. A great product. And mm -hmm. it's going back where you sound like, well, folks say, oh, black folks don't want it. Well, it's cool. black folks will support your business. I, I'm a firm believer in that. Mm -hmm. But... They may not necessarily want to buy your product. Right. <laughs> or may not need your service. But there is someone somewhere else does mm -hmm. that you may not be familiar with, but they really desire your product. As the business owner, the onus is on you to find out who needs and wants your product and where they at and get it to them. Mm -hmm. And people don't want to do that. They want to make something and put it on people that really don't want it. And that's your damn fault. Mm -hmm. That's your fault. You know, mm -hmm. that was a, uh, it was funny, me and Lil William was talking today, and uh, he was looking, uh, I don't know what the hell William was looking at, he seen a lady selling a wig for 300 something dollars. He's like, Daddy, why would somebody pay a wig? And I said, well, son, I really don't know the prices with, with wigs. Right. And I was telling him, I said, well, you might want to talk to your brother. I said, but the thing that it with wigs, I said, you know, he said, well, why wouldn't you buy one for $25? I said, it might be quality. Mm -hmm. That it wig right there, you, yeah, you, yeah, you might go wear that wig for $300. For the next seven, eight months. Mm -hmm. and $125 may fall apart. Mm -hmm. But if you just need it one time, you might get the $125. You need one to last for a while. I say it may be different reasons. The key is you just got to make sure who the person that will spend $300 for a week is no, know where to look at. Mm -hmm. And I always tell you guys, remember we, we, you know, what that tidbit is. Honest, spend less time focusing on the person. Also, you want to make sure your advertising dollars are going to where that person Habitates at mm -hmm. where they hang out at where they where they, where, where they look for things where they do stuff and guide your marketing to them. But understanding who wants it is your product needed? Mm -hmm. Is your product desired? <laughs> How many people selling yeah. the same product you got? You know, in that same area within a 10, 15, or twenty mile radius. And check this out: even if you sell something that somebody else is selling, what's your competitive advantage? What's going to make people skip over? All y'all got the same damn thing. Mm -hmm. All y'all got the same damn thing. What will make people skip over them and get to you? Right. And you got to sit here and think of that. Is it your hustle, your bustle, your your popularity? What is it? Right. People don't want to sit there and look at that. They just want to put stuff out there. Put stuff mm -hmm. out there. They don't went and bought all this damn apparel. Mm -hmm. So 
selling all these shirts and wonder why nobody don't support them. And a lot of times it's not that people don't support you. You know what we talk about last support is a great word. Mm -hmm. You know, people sharing your shit, they telling you I love you, I'm proud of you. That's support. It don't mean they like wearing that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's some stuff out there like, man, that, that's for my kids to wear. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wanna wear that. You know what I'm saying? And people don't want to be honest with themselves, like, look, man, who are you trying to push this to? Right. And let me redirect everything to that and stuff, you know. But you have to have marketing in place. You have to do that, you know. And that's going to be the difference between, I think a lot of folks that actually have a business are people that's out here hustling, right. you know. And, and, and until you made a commitment to, to, to do that, you're really out here just, to me, spinning wheels. Yeah. You're just spinning wheels. Right. You going to be out here? Well, somebody got a comment? And that's why I think a lot of times... Um, Folks really waste a lot of time and also get kind of dejected mm -hmm. with the process because they're out there doing something, but they never spend no time to actually direct everything to the proper person that actually uh, needed mm -hmm. their product or service. Okay? I mean, that's, uh, well, that's why that's why I, we always <laughs> say when, when me and Sigley talking, that's why, uh, you know, some TJ Maxx have some stuff and other TJ Maxx don't have certain certain things. You may go to one TJ Maxx and they got all the polo apparel. Go 20 miles down the road, they have no polo apparel because TJ Maxx did their due diligence. They know who their customer is and their customer is 20 miles up the road. Every, every Mason don't have your, right. the same and they, and they do that by zip code. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's, a, that's an awesome point, Leo. Yeah. yeah everything is, is adjusted. Inventory is adjusted. Depending on what the demographic wants. And people sometimes can, can notice that. And then, and then sometimes you have a different taste for it. Like you just said, they may go to the one in Alpharetta because mm -hmm. they know they have that product. But commonly, they don't necessarily get it. And they just get some of the things that they have. And you got to be savvy enough as a business owner to understand that for what you do or what you trying to push, who wants that and where you need to be directing your time and your money to promote everything mm -hmm. to get them people to purchase and use your product or service. Mm -hmm. Marketing is so, so, so much key. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can't try to sit here and you want to be this high-end stylist trying to market to low-end people, mm -hmm. right? You don't want to be low-end, but low-end, whatever. You know what the hell I mean. But, again, we know we got to be smart in what we're trying to do. Yeah. And also, if you're not a high-end person, you know, maybe right. trying to push high-end. <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> and I, that's that Atlanta. <laughs> I, I deal with just the stars, the celebrities. You know, <laughs> right. Everybody celebrity something. Yeah, everybody yeah. celebrity lamp. <laughs> you know. Again, uh, tonight we're talking about why did your business fail? Why it didn't work? We're having an open discussion in regards to different reasons I felt uh, businesses fail or things don't necessarily work out in the business. This is the uh, the dollar, and I am Deontay Burden, aka Mr. Short Dollar himself. Again, with tonight we've been streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. And the last one, guys, I think is super duper important when we talk about why your business didn't fail. And I think it's probably one of the key to even being a business owner, uh, just your basic men mental toughness. Mm. Um, shit ain't all gonna go good. Stuff right. gonna go wrong. You know, you're gonna spend money, all kind of money, have all kind of enthusiasm, and nobody buy it. You're gonna do all kind of stuff, make all kind of sacrifices, and things don't work out. Um, a lot of times, I've been there before, paid all this kind of money for stuff to happen, and I'm just sitting there phone ain't ringing i'm calling my phone from another phone just to make sure my phone working and the phone is working perfectly <laughs> nobody stepped by it that's a sad feeling lab. right right let me right. see i mean call the phone make sure the phone working <laughs> yeah man you called five minutes ago man right. mom wants your shit right <laughs> so, there you got your honest friend that's terrible <laughs> mom wanted that shit told you that right should have got the other one <laughs> Hey man, <laughs> got your little honest friend with you. You know, you you gotta know who you are. Are you that type of person that can handle the ups and downs? Can you handle pressure? Mm. Can you handle stress? Mm. Can you handle uh, uh, constant changes, constant things, or uh, really nothing really set in stone? Can you handle mm. that? A lot of times, when people don't necessarily go their way, they uh they uh panic mm. and do crazy stuff. I hear so many times. You know, we talked about this one about a month ago. When people always say they start their business, I got to get out the plantation. I hate my job. I got to do it. And what I say is, we got before you leave the plantation, uh, you need to make sure you recognize all the benefits of the plantation. Mm -hmm. I don't have no PTO. I don't have no paid sick leave. When I had COVID and I couldn't do that, I couldn't make no money. 
You know what I'm saying? There wasn't no reimbursement. And people still want their stuff done. And they might think I'm a cool little short guy, but that don't mean they're going to come deal with me. Right. right? One but King Drew says, can you handle rejection? Right? I mean, exactly. Right. And I understand that, you know, like, you know me, know me, not right now. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I get you. I said no. Well, I, I, I understand. I understand. I know you said no. But what about this? Right, right. But, uh, you know, not, and, and that's real talk. That's real talk. Especially rejection when you put your heart and time in the sun and you just know folks want it. Mm-hmm. And they don't want it. Mm. And they don't want to deal with you. And you just, you, you got to be able to sit there and just click it off. Right. Next one. Right. Click it off. Next one. And just keep hitting it, keep hitting it, keep hitting it. And understand that's just part of the game. Right. Part of the game. You keep putting it out, putting it out, putting it out. Your mental makeup got to be wide a certain way mm-hmm. to be able to handle that kind of stuff. You need to understand if you're capable of doing some stuff like that, can you put in what I take? I work 20 hours a day, so I don't have to work 40 hours a week. Right. Shit, my eyes be red, tired, <laughs> get up in the morning, go work out, go right. do this, that, and that, so I can take care of all this kind of stuff, deal with the stresses and all that kind of stuff, and then be able to, like, look, let me chill out, let me go party, then I get back to it. You got to be wired a certain way to handle certain things. I, I, do you think, uh, as far as mental toughness, do you think when people start a business and – they, they, like you say, they're going to get out of the plantation, so they're going to quit their job. Do you think they don't, have the, they don't have the mental fortitude or toughness to realize that you may need to work this job a little while while your, while your business is, you know, getting itself together? Because, you know, just because you start a business does not necessarily mean you're going to be successful today. So you may need to quit, keep that job, not even just for the money, but for the insurance, as you said. When you was out with COVID, you ain't had no money. You know what I'm saying? You, there was no, you know, insurance. You had to pay for all that doctor stuff yourself. You know, lab, it, it, it that, that's a good question. The thing of it is, is that, okay, I just say, you know, people I know, like, they're hardworking people. Mm-hmm. They will hard, they will be at their job and they'll work. They're not lazy. They'll work all, all the time. Hardworking. Um, shit at the job, change. Hey, y'all, we got, might need y'all to work for a couple more hours. You might not like it, but they, they mentally can handle doing that. Mm-hmm. But that same person get in a situation where, uh, you know, they're doing in business for themselves. And, hey, guys, we better do this for you, but the invoice won't get paid for another two weeks. Mm-hmm. What the hell you mean? You know, going crazy. Same hardworking person, but different kind of stressors, how they adjust to it can change. I think a lot of times people aren't, I think they can be mentally tough, and they can be hardworking people, mm-hmm. but they be totally damn unaware of how different it is. What I say all the time, you cannot want the freedom of an entrepreneur but want the security of an employee. Right, it, right. You can't do it. Right. You can't, you can't, you can't, you know, and, and that's just how that goes. And a lot of times people don't want to accept that. That's true. Uh, one King Drew says they want the microwave success, the quick, the, you know, the fast story, but they don't understand the pains and processes it takes to go through it. You know what I'm saying? This is what you were just saying. Yeah, people, that's a... That's a good point, and I, I don't think people spend enough time on two sides. People like me mm-hmm. are honest because, you know, you look at the, the Internet, you'll see somebody just like me been working on the business 20 some years. They're on the yacht. They got a shirt off. They got three or four naked women. Right. Hey, YouTubers, <laughs> this is me. You can do this, too. Right. Ask me how I do this. And then you see them in real life. Man, they sitting over there on the road, they <laughs> dropping Visine in their eyes and shit. You know, th- and, and on my side, I don't really be a, uh, transparent enough. Right. To be like, man, cool, when it come, it come. But when it ain't hell, I'm going to hit stressing the hell out too. Right. And uh, 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 on the other side of it is it's just people that's trying to do it, they are, I, I think, intentionally not trying to look at how difficult it is at taking it as being negative instead of being realistic. Right. If that makes sense. Most people, most times, they they start a business and they look straight to the finish line. You get what I'm saying? They don't, they, they, they at the start line, but they already at the finish, they looking at the finish line already. And when that's what happens, like when you were saying before, a couple of shows ago, he was like, you know, nobody tells you about the trips and falls from the start line to the finish line. They always just tell you that they jump from start right to finish. <laughs> Real talk. Right. Real talk. No one do it. What's up, PJ? See, PJ done tuned in. That's my, my second son. What's up, uh, PJ? Uh, yeah, that's, that's Junior. That's my second son tuning in. Um, 
Definitely, man. Definitely. Folks don't want to sit here. Hey, man, this shit rough. It's rough. It's cool, man. Like I said, you know, that's the thing about it. Um, the other one major thing is um, you, you, you'll you leave a $100,000 job to make $50,000 working for yourself. Right. Because of the freedom. You right. can move. And what happened, you so in love with the freedom and you love what you're doing, you have made double and triple that $100,000 for you know it. Because you're blindly in love with everything. Right. You're doing it for out of love. Yeah. You're not doing it out of because you got to. <laughs> well, last three years we doing this channel. We ain't see no money. Right. Three years. Three years we pushing. Who would, <laughs> <laughs> who would do that? And right. I'm sitting there like, and, and lab know of anybody, man. I'm, I I uh, I put a lot of time and a lot of damn money into my What's channel. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? We ain't even winning the tag. I'm talking about into the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And I can just tell you, majority of the money I put in was I would say education. Right. You know, just like, damn, don't do that no more. That was more of that. <laughs> don't do that no more. I don't do that no damn more. And that was just it. a lot of time investing in myself, joining the mastermind group, uh looking at coaching, putting out stuff and, and advertising the wrong thing where you learn from it. So, you know, people don't want to do that. No. And and that's the kind of thing we gotta make sure of. You gotta have the right mental makeup. Mm -hmm. The right mental makeup. And uh what I do want to get is those are the five things that let me re recoup all of them. Then I'm gonna give you guys some points of emphasis I want you to stick on. The five things that I personally think one main reason why businesses fail and things just don't work out. Number one being you know uh, you have these financial hurdles that you don't necessarily prepare yourself for. The second one is having ineffective management to help operate and run your business. The third one is poor business planning. You know you're not doing enough projection and forecasting for your business. The fourth one is no marketing whatsoever. No kind of due diligence, no kind of research, no kind of any kind of planning whatsoever to find out exactly or, or, or information rather to know exactly who wants, who can afford, mm -hmm. or Need. if it's needed, right. who needs it, if it's needed or whatever for that particular area. And the last one being just, you know, your mental makeup, your mental toughness. What kind of person you can you effectively do that? I think those are the main reasons why Excuse me, most businesses fail and things don't necessarily work out for you. Points of emphasis I want everybody to kind of just stick on when you start looking want to go around go down this world world a road of entrepreneurship is number one, you need to understand that this is very, 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 very key. Cause I had to learn this, especially with Mr. Short Dollar and Changing Lives. Mm -hmm. What you want to do and give and sell to people, and what people want are two, two whole different, different things. things. <laughs> the shit you trying to sell, the, shit, the stuff you trying to do, and what, what people want and want to spend their money on mm. are two different things. And you can get caught up in the trying to do this and push this stuff out because that's your dream and nobody wants it. Mm. Guys, listen. I'm a very educated brother, very sharp brother. I love helping people in business. Mm -hmm. But believe you me, I have a lot more to offer besides grant videos. And <laughs> I'm at, not for that. <laughs> at the end of the day, if the vast majority of people want to get information on grants, I need to make grant videos. Yeah, I get to see what they want. Okay, I still make other videos with, you know, they, they, they can kind of, Show some of my knowledge base. But at the end of the day, if the customer wants something, you got to sit there and do that. Right. You know, you have to just shake out of that. You being so stuck on what you're trying to do or what you don't like or whatever mm -hmm. and what the customer wants, it's two different things. Remember what the old adage, customer always right, customer always right. No, the customer is not always right, but the customer is always paying your ass. <laughs> and if you ever forget who's paying you, right. you're going to have yourself in a bad spot. Okay? So just remember that what you want to do and what you want to provide and what people want are two whole different things. The second thing is you have to make sure that you got a lot of honest people on your side. People are going to be straight up, give you good feedback, be straight with you, and tell you and knowledgeable about what you're doing right what you're doing wrong and not try to surround yourself with yes people that's going to make you feel good and pushing you because those yes people they love you they care about you but they're not being straight up with you either be, not necessarily in a bad way they just don't know what they don't know mm -hmm. when i hear people say at least they doing something at least they tried you don't need that shit you right. need somebody to tell you now nah, man it's messed up 
that's why I love being in the military so much because one thing in the army, you know, dude will tell you, man, it's effed up. Mm-hmm. Now half a second later, he helping you fix it, but you knew you were never gonna be in a shortage of people sitting there looking at you. Hey man, no, nah, I I started to say something to him, but I ain't say nothing. Right. No, nah, God gonna tell you, nah, bro, that's messed up. Right. And you sitting there like, well, man, you sure? No, nah, man, it's messed up. Right. Nah, <laughs> you ain't really in the word mess. You in an effed up. Right. And they're being honest with you. But look, bro, if you want to fix it, we can go do that. Mm-hmm. I love that about the military. And far too often, people don't want to hear that brutal truth. They want to feel okay or think it's okay enough. But, guys, that's, that can be the difference between success and failure. Mm-hmm. So why don't you sit with people that's going to be straight up with you and help you and coach you or the right way to do The best way may be the least convenient way, but it's the best way. Mm-hmm. It's the right way. You want to move correctly. You want to move in the right direction. You don't want to be sitting here just moving because mm-hmm. your ass all going to be spending time fixing and correcting or, most importantly, losing. And we don't want to be losing. We want to do it the right way, which still may be the most difficult way, but if we do that, everything else will work out. Right. Okay? So please, please, please remember that, guys. We had an awesome show tonight. I appreciate everybody tuned in. Uh, make sure if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. Short Dollar. A lot of great information currently on the channel. A lot of more great information coming down the pipe. I really appreciate you guys. I want you guys to make sure you're being safe. Get your damn uh, COVID shot. Get your COVID shot. I don't really push it on everybody. I know what it did for me and everything. I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything like that. But I know they should have my ass down. And it probably could have been a lot worse if I didn't. Um, so... But most importantly, guys, please, please, please take that out. You know, that was my little PSA about that. But please just be safe out there regardless because uh, you only got one life to live. And I want you guys to be happy with it and also be safe out there for you and your loved ones, okay? But take care of yourself, guys. Love you. Thanks for all the love and support. And I'll talk to you soon.